In this video lecture, we are going to be reviewing a variety of miscellaneous cost, volume, profit type special decisions that you may see in various textbook problems, you may see in real life as management. So this is just a, uh, a variety of these different types of problems. So let's take a look at our data set first. Shelley's Boutiques and Crafts had revenue of 5.6 million this year on sales of 500,000 units. Variable costs were 65% and fixed costs totaled 1,750,000. Although the first five years were relatively profitable, increases in competition have led to a negative trend in profitability that has led them to the point where they have to make some changes to stay afloat. So they're evaluating two options to stay afloat. So option one, they are considering purchasing machinery to automate their operations. There's an upfront cost of 500000 for the machinery itself, but they're going to save 10% on the variable costs. So that's option one. Option two, outsourcing the production of one of their main components that requires a substantial amount of machinery and skilled labor. This will reduce fixed costs by 450000 but will increase the variable costs from their current 65% of sales to 75% of sales. So really option one is all about trying to automate, trying to cut variable costs by increasing fixed costs. Option two is the exact opposite, reduce the amount of fixed costs, but increase the variable costs. So you may be familiar with the concept of operating leverage, and that's really what this is getting at here. Do you want to decrease your operating leverage, which is option two? It decreases risk, but it also decreases the potential for higher reward. Option one, on the other hand, increases your operating leverage, which increases risk, but increases potential reward. So to clarify what I'm talking about by that, let's take a look at these various problems first of all. A, determine the break-even point in units before any changes. So before we do anything with option one or two, we need to take a look at the fixed cost in total, which we said was $1,750,000. So that's the fixed cost. Now we need the contribu contribution margin per unit. Now this is the dollar amount. Remember, contribution margin is sales minus variable costs. Now notice, it's, we want a per unit amount. Our sales this year were 5,600,000, but it was across 500,000 units. So what we actually need, I'm going to do this first of all. Oops. It's going to be the 5,600,000 divided by the 500,000 units. So the sales per unit is 1120. The variable cost per unit is, if you can recall, it said variable costs are 65%. So the sales is 1120, variable costs are 728. The difference is the contribution margin per unit, which is 392. Now there is one thing I do want to mention here that might save you some time in various problems. If you have a variable cost percentage of 65%, sometimes that's referred to as the variable cost ratio, your contribution margin ratio is the other 35 percent. The two variable cost plus contribution margin have to add up to 100 percent. So if we take the 1120 multiplied by the other 35 percent we should get this same 392. So that's just a shortcut way of thinking about it. Three dollars and ninety two cents contribution margin per unit now remember, break-even point as far as units. We have to take the fixed cost total amount across all production divided by the three the contribution margin per unit of 392. 
Now, what this basically tells us is that we have to somehow cover $1,750,000, and every unit we sell gives us $3.92 to do that. So how many units at 392 contribution margin are needed just to cover the fixed cost? Because keep in mind, contribution margin, that's already subtracted out the variable costs. This is what's left after subtracting out variable costs. So we need 446,429 units just to break even. The good news is we're at least a little bit above that. We're at 500,000 units, but we're trying to be even more profitable. So now if we get to B, assuming an income tax rate of 35%, what dollar value of sales is required to earn an after-tax profit of $600,000? So let's think about this for a second. If we want to earn an after-tax profit of 600000 that means our before-tax profit needs to be quite a bit higher than that. And, of course, our sales would have to be even quite higher than that. So the first question is, what before-tax profit would be needed to earn an after-tax profit of $600,000? So what we have to do with these situations, we know our tax rate is a, is 35% or 0.35, so we're only getting the other 65% of uh, all of our sales dollars after profit. So what we need to take a look at here, if we need $600,000 after profit, we need a higher number before profit. So we're bringing in a little bit of algebra here, and we can set up an equation to, to explain what we're doing here. If we say 0.65x equals $600,000, what we're basically saying here is 65% of some higher number has to equal $600,000. We're trying to solve for x here. Now, the reason I put the 0.65 is that, again, with we don't get the other 35%. That's taxed. That gets thrown away. We want to know how much do we get after tax. It's going to be 65% of whatever our profit is. So 0.65x equals $600,000. Now the way to simplify that is to divide both sides by 0.65, which would give us x equals 600,000 divided by 0.65. So the best way to think about this whenever you're dealing with a problem like this is that it's going to be whatever after-tax profit you're looking for divided by 1 minus your tax rate. 1 minus 0.35 is 0.65. So let's do that. Our before-tax profit would have to be 923.77 $923,077, and let's test it out. If we do have that, and we basically take away our 35%, which leaves us with 65%, that does indeed give us $600,000 after tax. So that's what we have there. Now let's take a look at the contribution margin ratio. We already know the contribution margin per unit but we need to know the contribution margin ratio, which is a percentage. Now, nothing has changed yet. So if we go back up, we said our variable costs are 65%. Remember, the contribution margin plus variable cost ratio has to add up to 100%. So if we already have 65% used up, we're going to use the other 35% here. Oops. So the contribution margin ratio is 0.35 or 35%, whichever way you want to look at it. That's the percentage of every sales dollar that is used to cover fixed expense and profit. So now we have a problem that says what dollar amount of sales would be required to earn the after-tax profit described above? So let's take a look at what would happen if we were just trying to do a normal break-even calculation. 
we would take our fixed cost of 1750000 divided by, for units, we would divide it by the contribution margin per unit, but for sales dollars, we would divide it by the 0.35. So just to break even, it would take $5 million of sales, which, as you remember, we're a little bit above that already. Now, again, we're not just wanting to break even. We're wanting to also hit some target profit. So what we need to do here, it's still the same basic equation, except now we need to add more to the numerator. We're not just trying to cover $1,750,000 of cost. We're also trying to cover another $923,077 in profit. We're trying to cover all of that with the contribution margin amount. So we add that to the numerator. Our new sales figure that we need to hit that much profit is $7,637,077. As you can see, we're quite a ways away from that. We're trying to get that profitable. So now we're going to take a look at the concept of operating leverage that I mentioned before. What is the new contribution margin in total before applying any of the options? So this is really new. It's not new yet. It's the original contribution margin in total. And again, there are a couple of ways of doing this. Here we're looking for a total dollar amount that's contributed after carving out variable costs. So we could simply take the sales dollars of 5.6 million multiplied by the 35% contribution margin ratio. This gives us a dollar amount of contribution margin. At this point, before applying any option, we have 1,960,000 in contribution margin. Now, the operating income in total before applying this, we have to take a look at that as well. Here we know, basically out of that 1960000 the only thing we have to subtract out to get our operating income is the $1,750,000 fixed cost. So our operating income at this point is 210,000. Remember, variable costs were already carved out before we even got to the contribution margin. Once you have contribution margin, that tells you how much you have left to cover just your fixed expense and whatever's left over is profit, or in this case, operating income. Now notice operating, so this is before taxes and technically before interest if we had it, but we're not concerned with that at this point. So now we're looking for the new operating leverage factor, or the operating leverage factor. So the way I've set it up here, it's in the order that you need to do the calculation. Operating leverage factor is your contribution margin at a particular point in time divided by your operating income. So this actually should not be a dollar amount. This is just a number we have a factor of nine. Now what this tells us is that any gain in sales, if we have a 10% gain in sales, that's gonna be impacting operating, in, operating income ninefold. So it amplifies the operating income by a 900% uh, comparison. So if we increase income or if we increase sales by 1%, we're going to have a 9% increase in income. On the other hand, if we decrease sales by that same 1%, we're going to decrease sale or income by that, that amount as well. So the higher the factor, what that really tells you is essentially how much fixed overhead do they have compared to, op, to variable overhead. The more fixed you have, the higher your operating leverage is generally going to be, which gives you more risk, but it also gives you the potential for 
more rewards, more profitability because it amplifies both the increases or decreases in sales. So it's good or bad. It's very good or very bad. Now let's take a look at option one. We're going to look at the new break-even point in units after applying option one. So to do that, we have to take a look at what is the new fixed cost in total. We start off with 1750000 but we're going to add 500000 in. So our new fixed cost is going to be $2,250,000. Now we need to know the new contribution margin per unit. So let's take a look at option one. Remember that decreased variable cost by 10%. If you're decreasing variable cost by 10%, you're increasing contribution margin by the same amount. Any decrease in variable cost goes to the contribution margin. Now, when we say decrease it by 10%, what that essentially means is it's going to be 90% of what it was before. We can't just subtract 0.10 from it. We have to actually multiply the current variable costs by 0.90 to figure out what it's now going to be. So it's currently 65%. New variable cost is going to be 0.65 times 0.90, the new variable cost is going to be 58.5%, which means the new contribution margin ratio is going to be the other 41.5%. Now that's fine, we have a ratio here but we really need to know the con the new contribution margin per unit. So up above, we said our sales price was 1120, and now we're saying our contribution margin is going to be 41.5% of that. Our new contribution margin per unit is 465. So now we can calculate a new break-even point in units by taking our fixed cost divided by the new contribution margin per unit of 465. Now we need to sell 484,079 units to break even. Notice that's higher than what it was before, and this very, may very well be expected because our fixed costs have, had, have increased. So our, it takes longer to break even, but the benefit is that once we do break even, now we have a higher contribution margin ratio to give us more profitability. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and see how the operating leverage factor has changed. So we need the new contribution margin in total. So that's going to be 465 multiplied by the current 500,000 units of sales. Now we need to take a look at the new operating income in total, which is going to be this contribution margin minus our new fixed costs. So the contribution margin of 2325000 minus our new fixed costs of 2250000 So now our new operating income is actually 75000 compared with 210000 so it dropped down at this level. Right now, at this point, we have less income. But let's take a look at our operating leverage factor. Contribution margin divided by the operating income. And again, this should be a number. So now we have a factor of 31, which is our operating leverage. Before we had a factor of 9, now we're quite a bit more heavily leveraged at 31. So what this basically means is if we have a, let's just say a 10% increase in sales, we're going to have 31 times that, so in other words, a 310% increase in income. A 10% increase in sales increases income by 310%. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, and we'll walk through and prove it, so to speak. 
Now let's go down to just option two. So with option two, we're not going to do both option one and two. We're only looking at one at a time. So let's take a look at just option two. Now we have a, in, a decrease in fixed costs by $450,000. So instead of having 1750000 we subtract out 450000 So let's do that first. We're left with $1,300,000 in total. Let's look at the contribution margin per unit, though. Originally, it was 392, but now we're saying that variable costs are going to be, instead of being 65%, they're now going to be 75%. Now, it's not that's not the same as an increase by of 10%, because increase of 10% would be 65%, multiplied by 1.10. Instead, this is actually a 10% addition to the percentage, a 10 percentage point addition. So keep that in mind. If our, if our variable costs are now 75%, that means our contribution margin ratio is now 25%. 25% of our sales dollar of 1120. So 1120 multiplied by the 25% contribution margin ratio gives us $2.80 per, per uh, unit sold that goes to cover fixed costs and profit. But remember, we don't have nearly as much fixed costs to cover. The break-even point is going to be the fixed costs divided by the contribution margin per unit which is now 464,286 units, which is quite a bit less than what we had before. We Under option one, we would have had to sell 484,000 to break even. Now we only need to sell 464,000 to break even. So now the new contribution margin in total, we're still selling 500,000 units at now $2.80 per unit. So now our total contribution margin is only 1400000 The new operating income will be this amount minus our new fixed cost. So the new operating income is $100,000. So just by looking at that, just that number alone, it seems like maybe this was the smart way to go. We're more profitable. We've already earned another $25,000. But let's take a look at our operating leverage factor. Contribution margin in total divided by operating income. Now it gives us a 14 factor as for as far as how highly leveraged we are. This is quite a bit less than option one, but notice it's a little bit more than no option whatsoever. Now, let's take a look at this last question, which is concept-based. If sales increase by 25%, which option would be impo impacted most positively? The highest operating leverage factor is the one that's going to have the highest impact on income. So let's just take a look at this. Uh, an operating leverage factor of 31, it means if we increase sales by 25%, we're going to have 31 times that increase in operating income. So in other words, a sales increase of 25%, which by the way, here we put the actual percentages, 25 multiplied by 31, that would tell us that we're going to have a 775% increase in operating income. A sales increase of 25%, gives us a 775% increase in operating income. So, in other words, it'll be almost eight times as much income as you have right now. That's a very drastic change, but let's prove it. So, we need to go here, and we need to see what our sales increase would amount to. If we currently sell 500,000 units...
and we want 25% more, that means we're selling 1,250,000 more units. Oops. Let's say more units sold. Now the easiest way to prove this, remember that whatever your your uh, contribution margin dollar amount is, once you've broken even, and really doesn't even matter, I guess, if you did break even, you take the number of units sold, uh, number of additional units sold, multiplied by your contribution margin dollar amount per unit, that tells you how much additional profit you have. So 1, million two hundred fifty. I'm sorry, 125,000 more units, and that was option two we were looking at. Or I'm sorry, that was option one. So our contribution margin after option one is 465. So by selling 125,000 more units at a $465 or $4.65 contribution margin, we're adding $581,250 to our revenue, our profit. Remember at that point, after applying option one, our operating income was only $75,000 to begin with. So 75,000, and we said we're going to have a 775% increase, or 7.75. That's exactly the same amount of increase we just calculated that we would have, 581,250. So the whole point of that side discussion was to prove that operating leverage, the higher the factor, the higher it's going to amplify your sales increases or decreases. As such, we would want to choose option one because it has the highest operating leverage factor. So hopefully this has helped to clarify some of these various types of problems you'll see with CVP in different textbooks, different exams, things like that. But as always, if you do have any questions, please feel free to comment, and I'll be glad to help out with those. Thanks for your time.